All righty, here we go. It's spinning up. All right, guys, today's dad joke. Uh, work, trying, trying to make it HR uh, appropriate, but here we go. How do you organize your works space party? You plan it. Plan it. Get it? <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, and one of these days I'll laugh harder. It is. It's good. You can try. Gotta go we'll, into we'll, another book somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, these, right. are all, these are all <laughs> provided by the interwebs. Why did everyone enjoy being around the volcano? It's just so lavable. Oh, oh there you get, go. There you go. Dad joke for the day. It's safe to say around the kids. Is that, <laughs> yep, yep. All right, so uh, sorry, live? Facebook is still spinning. It's not yet live yet. Yep, me the, wait for it. This is like the one rare occurrence why the fate, why we do the dad jokes because it's occasionally this happens. Uh -huh. uh, it says right, we're on there for one minute already. Is it? My goodness, what... it's telling me we're still spinning up. So. Oh well, I guess we'll uh, wait until that confirmation. Yeah, this yeah. is the confirmation we're looking for. So it right, looks like we're live on my side now. So everybody, welcome to Chicago Land Chats for th was it Monday, July twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Gosh, time is a flat month. I'm. T Last Monday of the month. There you go. Adam Serwinski here with Sidebar Insurance Solutions, joined by my good friend, Butch Zimar. Butch, why don't you introduce yourself? Let everybody know what you did. Thanks, Adam. I'm Butch Zimar from Elite Benefits. We help small to mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs and worksite benefits. I'm Adam Serwinski with Sidebar Insurance Solutions, your home auto and business insurance solution source. So if you need to insure it in any of those areas, we're here to help and solve those problems for you. Uh, today we are joined with and facing one of the most challenging things we've ever had to deal with, obviously, with the work life changes that have happened due to COVID. And one of our really great guests who has been on with us previously, Katie Cummins, did such an amazing job. We thought we would have her back and we'd have her colleague back, Debbie Lusk, and they could talk to us a little bit about how work life may change and how managers and employees could work together to ease the concerns, especially as we now head into the schooling decisions all coming out in the areas whether it's gonna be e-learning or hybrid models or full in-person, in things are changing. And so I think the best people to talk to are the experts in HR, Katie and Debbie. I'm gonna to toss to them now and let them talk a little about themselves as well as HR Boost. Katie, why don't you start? Great. Hi, I'm Katie Cummins. I'm an HR consultant with HR Boost. Thanks so much for having me back. I'm excited to be here. Um, HR Boost is an HR consulting firm specialing in everything from projects to shared services and uh, a la carte options as well, um, helping clients navigate through all of their HR challenges. Debbie? Great. All right, I'm Debbie Lusk. I'm a human resources business partner with HR Boost. And so I lead a dedicated team on any one of our given clients. Those clients are typically in some challenge of needing triage, help, support in the landmine of human resources. And the COVID-19 is just one of the many issues that are hitting our workforce today. And how do we manage that employer at home and the employee at home at the same time and make sure everyone is feeling engaged and productive. So, and it is certainly a, a mental health relationship going on between that employer and the employees working and the family at home for sure. So glad to be here. Thank you guys so Thanks. much for joining us. What are the things we just wanna kind of start off the questions as you guys are seeing, you're interacting with your clients on a daily basis. What is the biggest hurdle that you're seeing or the biggest thing that you're anticipating or advising your clients on as you head towards this you know, rapidly changing and we look forward towards a fall with maybe even no schools open. Uh, what are you advising your clients on? What are the big things or roadmaps you're, you're walking them through? Well, can I jump in here, Katie, yeah. and kind of start us? Because I tell you, one of the things I'm kind of, it's, it's going to be the front end to answer that question is Katie and I dialogue. But, you know, one of the areas that employers are really struggling with is how do you keep that employee engaged? workplace. I think we just lost Katie on us, but she'll get back in here. Yep, but sir. it's how do we keep that employee engaged? And one of the things that um, HR Boost did, and when we work with our clients, is that you need to do some things between that uh, family, sorry about that, guys, uh, need to do some things between the, the, the um, workplace and, mm -hmm. um, and what we're doing remote. And so Katie was very instrumental in the HR Boost relationship, as well as the HRB Tim, team members participating in some really fun offline programs that I think are still going to have some relevancy for even in the home life when the kids go back to school. So, you know, Katie, one of the things I shared with you, you know, you really woke me up to some very simple things. We're just still here trudging in that computer and drink water. What were some of those programs that you did? I'm 
you were really sure. expert at them. Absolutely. Um, so at HR Boost, we started Wellness Wednesdays and uh, and everything is free that we're doing. It's just fun, creative things to do. So we did a water challenge for eight weeks and it was just sharing tips about staying hydrated, the benefits of drinking water. Um, one of the great things is as you drink water throughout the day, it forces you to take that bio break. So you've got to get up step away from your computer for a little bit, stretch and other things as well. Um, so just one of those fun, great things that you can do with kids and families as well. Um, right now, what we're doing is a real food challenge, which sounds simple because it is. It's basically just eliminating as much as you can um, heavily processed foods and trying to eat real healthier foods, um, which has been a really fun challenge as well. Yeah, I mean, think about the, those kind of programs, if I could keep going at I mean, when you think about it, that the human brain in adult world, 59 minutes is about all that we can really handle, right? 59 minutes in terms of that moment to be the most productive. And then the, the brain has already told us we need to take another 15, 20 minutes and we have to segue. We've got to do different things. So why is that any different in, even in the school world? Because I know we want to talk about a little bit about that today. How are the school systems, how are the parents at home going to create these like breaks? Mm -hmm. Can't look at this computer so for tough. two, three, four straight, can we? So mm -hmm. those are fun things that we did. I mean, I sure know it made me starting to feel better in a very difficult time at the beginning of the pandemic for me personally. So, yeah, yeah, fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, what are so what are you uh, two of you with with some of the clients or, or uh, people that you're communicating with the companies um, uh, adapting? So, like even from a manager level, is there additional training that's going through how they're gonna that they should be handling some of their employees when situations like this arise? Has anything changed in that mindset? Well, I've just had this, Katie. I'm going to jump in here again because I've just had a situation here. Okay, so. What is it that's going on? You know, we're going to go through a culture change. HR and managers as well, we're all the time like, well, I can't ask too much personally about what's going on in that person in their world, right? Because we've been taught, can't touch into that personal life. We're going to start flipping that culture. And that comes manager training. One of the ways to change is start training managers on how to ask that question. Because if you're not getting into how that mental health, how that person is feeling in that point in time to help them plow through or give them the resources they need from even your benefit programs, you're not going to be as productive. So it's flipping that manager's hat, getting them to start asking at the very beginning of every meeting, how are you feeling today? You know, and really get at what's going on, what's wrong. Well, Makes let's talk about that a little bit because it's going to be a train and just be a transformation too of how you're holding meetings, how you're hosting those meetings, how the meetings are structured and scheduled, and maybe mm -hmm. what they look like. Are they one on ones? Are there team meetings where people are able to share and maybe commiserate, right? So, what mm -hmm. are you guys advising as far as ways in which you can create safe space for those communications as well as to try and do have some separation between the work life and the personal life because it's just sometimes unhealthy to blend the two. So, what are you advising on that? Maybe, Katie, you could take that from there. Yeah, I think it's hard, right? Especially when you're working from home, where do you draw the line in work and, and life, right? You close up your computer, you go downstairs, okay, well, now all of a sudden you're home. But I, I think right now, you know, that line is very blurry between work and, and personal life. But I think managers just being human, just being elements of that, right? Checking in on their employees, whether or not that's a, a weekly standing call or a meeting just to be able to provide that quick checkpoint, um, you know, to have that safe space to be able to talk, to listen, to really listen to what employees are saying. Um, are they struggling with making decisions? Are they trying to figure it out from a schedule standpoint of how to fit it all in? Um, is there just something that an employer and a manager can do to make their lives a little bit easier in terms of let's move this meeting that's going to be right in the middle of e-learning that you're not going to be able to, to work around? So I think it's, it's flexibility, it's compassion, it's empathy, and it's just really listening and then being able to help your employees, maybe referring them to your EAP or other uh, programs, you know, making some other introductions to really just be supportive. Absolutely. You know, you ask about well, what can we do? Number one, our clients who were trying to instruct them on, number one, you got to raise communication level, which means you do need to create the structure. There need to be team meetings. You need to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team. And you need to have and somehow engage some fun element that meets what your culture is. 
Maybe it's a food program, maybe it's a walk program, maybe it's a reading program, but most importantly data. Nothing will change and help our employees and our businesses if we don't get it data. So look at well-being surveys, well-being surveys that will help get to the information of what does your business need? And of course, you know, we have those kinds of tools with HR Boost, by all means, well-being surveys. Do not underestimate getting at that data, the data that looks at your whole group to correlate into what your program is going to be. As you can tell, I have a passion for this. It's really important. <laughs> And I guess what are some things in the in that survey that some people could expect um, because it could be now you're just adding something else to a manager's plate to figure out obviously it's important but what what are some highlights from that from that survey that give people an idea what that's like. Sure, I don't know Kay, are you as familiar with it at this point in time the well being survey. Go yeah. ahead. Cause you, yeah, because I know it's something you know we have uh, you know been uh, you know working on here in these you know last months. But this particular survey is really going to get at the metric of just exactly what's the stress level of what your employees are feeling. Mm -hmm. Where are they? But then what's generating that stress? Mm -hmm. It gets you the data, but it allows you to go into the next step to uncover. Okay, so you're feeling you're feeling basically discouraged. What is that? So then we then work with you. And, and you know, will help anyone with this is what's causing you to feel discouraged. It's the key questions that follow, but it gives you some direction, right? Because at any point in time, you know, there's basically six points in a survey, but it's which ones do you want to put your energy on to make sure that you're giving it direction? Because, you know, we can't solve world hunger. We can't solve all this. We obviously haven't done it in six months, right? We're still working toward that finish line. It's the same thing with how employees are feeling. But if you don't get something to give you some direction of how you're going to really help that workforce, then, you know, again, you're just like a dartboard. Mm -hmm. Do you have any exercises or just uh recommendations for things and ways in which because right now the anxiety is obviously multifaceted you have anxiety from the just general fact that there's a virus out there that's killing lots of people then you have the virus the fact that they may have family or children or relatives or friends who are out there and that their interactions have changed and then obviously work dynamic has changed incredibly during these difficult times can you come do you have recommendations for how to compartmentalize that or how to attack those things or draw them out in a safe way that makes people feel comfortable, but also allows them to feel maybe to, to calm some of those anxieties down. Uh, given that, you know, right now, businesses are feeling stressed just like their employees are too. And then you have to worry about employment on top of it. So there's a lot of dynamics here. Is there anything that you would recommend as far as how to segment those things out to make them manageable or make them, you know, um, a little more clear uh, to, to everyone on board so you can actually start addressing them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you really want to look at what are the issues here, right? And you've got to break it down because it's overwhelming to think that, again, you're going to solve everything because, frankly, you're not. We're just trying to kind of get through here. So I think really looking at, at what those issues are and understanding on a very personal one-on-one -on -one basis with your employees, making that connection to understand what it is. Is it concerned about um, scheduling? Okay, well, let's figure out a way that you can still be productive and efficient, but if the middle of the day is when you're going to be working on e learning or caring for others in your household and that's just not going to work, then let's figure out how we're still going to go about our day, but be more flexible and adaptable. And maybe that eases the burden for employees. Maybe they are anxious about contracting the disease and they're fearful of getting sick or giving that disease to another one. Okay, well, continuing to work remotely, again, if that eases their anxiety to say, you can work from home for the rest of the year. And as long as you are being productive and efficient, there's no need to return to the office at this point. And that just kind of eases their mindset a bit. So that way they can get back to focusing on work and they're not so fearful of these other areas. So I would say really kind of trying to get that deeper understanding of what's really going on with your employees and what are those big concerns and how can you address them? And it's very important what Katie says, it's really getting that objective data What's the objective data? Because you know we, we know there are some particular situations that you're not gonna be able to work from home. You're not. You know, you have a job, you have a position and there is no working remote because I got a production line out there and these, these um, products or these pieces still need to go. But still that doesn't dismiss you as an employer of trying to understand what is it that is making you the individual afraid? Which again, goes back to that objective, 
a objective data gathering, whether it's our well-being survey or whether we're building in, you talked about Adam, like what's one of the solutions that you're building in a frequency of just a, a very soft survey to employees and a survey monkey, whatever tool you have at your fingertips of just what are you feeling? Three, three specific questions to get at what's on their mind. To bring some levity to this, we had one person that that in our particular survey with one client that, hey, they, they wanted to come back to work because they really wanted to come back to work because they just found the husband at home and the kids too distracting. So they had a small office and where it was reasonable and easy for that person, fine, you're in. And she became much more productive, if you will. So <laughs> you just got to get at the heart of it, right? Yep. Right. So, so now we've talked a good deal about collecting the data um, and some initial front. Um, uh, if you don't mind, let's transition to what programs are available once we know that there's some issues there. What, what do the employees have access to? I know in, in previous conversations, we talked about just extra support. And of course, on some of the health side or just extra benefits, you got telemedicine that could actually get access to things without actually having to worry about leaving work or scheduling appointments during the day and making it obvious or, um, or just taking that time off because there's so much flux going on. Employee, some employees can't afford to take off. So what are some of the ideas that you are implementing in the workplace for treatment or getting access to programs through the workplace? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, now is a really good time to start taking a look at your benefit plan offerings as well as you're preparing for open enrollment where you may be making some changes. So mm -hmm. if your programs don't offer telemedicine, that's something that we've really seen in, um, in terms of industry trends is a rise in telemedicine and for good reasons. Um, looking at things like that, if you don't have an EAP program in place, that's something that you'll want to make sure that you implement or perhaps expanding that as well and offering more counseling support or other virtual options that you can look to as well. So I think now is really the time to start thinking about where you can add in those areas and start to take a good, good look at that. Um, your PTO policy as well, is it flexible enough that people can take time off when they're truly sick? You want people to stay home when they're sick. You don't want them coming to work when they're sick mm -hmm. or they have a sick child. Again, you want them to stay home and not send that sick child to school. So is your policy generous enough? Uh, is your culture um, accepting enough that, that you can incorporate those types of things. That's good. And, and just because it's industry jargon, but um, so EAP, uh, and just to make sure I'm, uh, I'm correct too, is Employee Assistance Program. Yeah. And so, okay, just want to make sure, yeah. um, because so many in our audience probably don't know what that is, but I just want to make sure that was clear. And, and every company usually has some type of form of uh, employee assistance program, either built in by, let's say they're smaller and it's just, it, it could be built in by one of the insurance companies, depending on what product, but then also HR, once they get to that point or HR outsourcing, you could actually implement a stronger program that's a little bit more customized for that employer and their employees needs. Yes, thank you. And I, I appreciate that, right? Yeah. Sometimes you get in the HR industry jargon and yes. you forget what that actually means. So yep. yes, basically an employee assistance program is going to be something that's free to employees that mm -hmm. would provide a number of different just mental health wellness uh, support. And it really has a broad umbrella. Um, but yes, from counseling, just to day-to-day -day issues, living and struggling, I would say, you know, now more than ever, I think an EAP is, is more important than it probably ever was. And again, it's a free confidential service. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of can be partnered with your current um, programs and offerings, but having having something would be really helpful to employees as well as their family members, because that's another key component. It's also available to family as well. Yep. And the good news is these programs all along were available and, and maybe already in the workplace. It just it took this. I mean, there's a lot of things that came to light, light with my clientele because of of the COVID that we live we're living in, right? They didn't realize certain things were there, or uh, they took advantage of it because it wasn't needed. And then, of course, you mentioned confidentiality. I mean, there's a lot of employees that could be embarrassed over getting help and and treatment, and so they design programs to keep it segmented from the the workplace, so that way they could seek the treatment and be productive while they're there, but still get the help that they need. Sorry, guys. I know I froze out there for a bit, but I'm back. So, and I think I'm going to be building off of what um, what you just said yep. from what I was listening to. But, you know, I think it's a matter of, of communication. Mm -hmm. Most often I have found when I called, before I was consulting, when I was in my brick and mortar, 
trying to educate your employees on what's offered and available in the very rich packages most employers offered, even in the mental health area, was, was, was very challenging. And HR typically in the brick and mortar, we would just like give up, you know, we wouldn't work on that. But employers now need to more than ever understand what they're offering in these benefits. Very important, communicate what you got. And look at EAP. I've always been a big advocate of EAP programs, but you know what? In a survey uh, that was done by Sharm, it showed that um, out of 80% of employers that he had EAP programs, 10% utilized. Now go figure. And there they have a rich resource. And, and those, those, um, those um, resources are really designed to help what I call more of that blue collar worker. You know, again, it's the basic, basic data to get someone to a place where they need help. You know, and not be afraid to talk about it anymore because of the confidentiality. Get the trust of your employees and talk about it, communicate. It's so important today. So one of the things I, I wanted to touch on, and you guys have talked about, I think, the generosity of most employers here, right? And the vast majority of employers want their employees engaged. They want them to feel cared for and taken care of. But there's also a concern, obviously, with employers right now that there's some level or some extent that people may try and take advantage. And so how are you advising employers as far as what limits they can go to uh, to being when, when enough's enough, right? And when they've tried and bent over backwards, but their business realities kind of ex, uh, are exceeded by their hopes of being of their generosity right and so how how in this difficult time are you advising employers on when they know that there's a limit here or when they know that it's not the right fit and someone's not in the right seat at the moment mm. well i'm going to grab that one okay you got it katie go ahead <laughs> mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead it's a tough one no one wants this question right but it yeah. needs to be asked like there's there are hard truths coming out of this, unfortunately. And I think there's a lot of business owners going, what and how far do I have to go with my business? And I know they want to go as far as they can, but at what limits yeah. or how do you how do you know when you've reached that limit? Yeah. And I don't know if Katie's going to um, build on this as well, but I, I'm telling you, I, I, my clients will say, get yourself educated on the FCCRA. In other words, what, what truly does the Employee Personal Sick Leave Act really mean? And what does the Emergency Family Medical Leave Act really mean? Get educated because again, at no fault of any employee, any employee sees just the words and the surface of what new benefit element might be being introduced and they're grabbing a hold of it and employers are very nervous you know we work in the same suite but you do this small to medium size and the employers don't have enough information and they're nervous about it and so what do we do we react to well hey it's a new law uh, i guess my employee knows right and i mean sort of subliminal thing you know get smart and know, get your policies aligned and policies not in a hard way, but understand what you can do and can't do. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. Just to kind of reiterate that with Debbie. So there's certain things you can do, certain things you can't do, but I think understanding what you're offering and making sure that you are flexible to a certain degree and that employees know that as well. So they may not realize that they have certain things that are available to them. So just making sure to educate them um, that there may be some resources for them that they didn't know about. And uh, maybe that, that will help take a pause, take a break, uh, come back and, and hopefully then back to work uh, as before. And that's yeah. great. Um, so with, with, with changes come, coming or just change in general, workplace needs to adapt. We're heading into uh, the, the second half of the year. And uh, what are like, uh, like some of the key points that uh, maybe a takeaway from our conversation here that employers um, should look at middle management? I mean, just a couple things. I know your company offers some programs that can be implemented that are unique and designed specifically for small to mid-sized companies, but not to try to like try to oversell anything, but it's an important topic. And maybe there's um, a lot of employers that don't know some of these things are even available, but, you know, uh, instead of, you know, I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but maybe there's a couple key things that you can share that might be able to uh, at least bring it to their awareness as we head in the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, you know, I, I am, again, I'm not shy of saying get to data. I mean, mm -hmm. get some surveys going. We have, a, you know, one element we have, we do offer a well survey. Get to that survey. I mean, it's, it's reasonable. 
you know, talk mm -hmm. with us. We'll work with you on whatever mm -hmm. you need. And, you know, then the other leading thought is, is management training and HR Boost. I think maybe Katie, we froze up again, but HR Boost can design and customize to a training need that your managers have to be able to manage that culture of your workplace of how it's shifting today. So what I like mm -hmm. about what we do do is that we are nimble and we customize to your culture. And I think that's key. It's, we, we shouldn't be vanilla cutting, you know, any solution here. Got to understand what the client is the employer. But those are two areas that well-being survey and then also get into some management training to soften up how we're dealing with these employees' difficult issues. Right, Katie? They're mm -hmm. difficult for people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So while we do have a number of solutions and we can certainly come in and partner and help a lot of ways, these are difficult questions, right? These are difficult times. And, uh, you know, there's not necessarily a playbook to navigate here. It's kind of a case by case basis. We have a lot of resources and suggestions and certainly some best practices. Um, but what we really want to do is get to the heart of the issues, the challenges, and figure out a way that we can best support. And it changes all the time. It, it changes day by day. It changes person by person and client by client. And it's just being able to, you know, keep an open mind and, and support in new ways. This has really been great. We're coming up on that half hour mark, so we want to be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, really quickly, though, before we let you go, we want to give you guys an opportunity to talk about some of the resources that you guys have available. Katie, I know you're putting out a video recently, right? So people can kind of get updates from you and your expertise. Do you guys want to share about ways that they can kind of connect as well to you guys and the and the content and data, data like to Debbie's point, but also the opportunities that are available through HR Boost? Because obviously this information has been fantastic. Just mm -hmm. implementing it into a personal business and making that relationship is obviously the next step. So why don't you share that info and uh, let people know how they can get in touch with you? Sure. Yeah, so I think one key is that any uh, client uh, who is not a client or any business owner, if you want to see what your platform of your HR looks like right now, regardless if you have an HR department or you have an office manager being your HR, take your HR scorecard. It's right online on our website go to that scorecard, get your snapshot. And you know what? We will give you a free consulting uh, session just to let you spin your ideas with us as to what you can do. And it's free. And uh, if it establishes a relationship in the future, great. If not, very giving. We are mm -hmm. here to help. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely check out our website. There's a lot of great tools and resources and not a shameless plug for myself, but I've recorded a lot of different uh, webinars and booster blasts answering some of those tough questions that come in on a day to day basis. Um, but we've just got a lot of different information out there, which is free. So hopefully it's helpful. Um, we also have other packages and bundles as well, depending on what you're looking for. But Debbie said that scorecard is huge. And it gives you so much information and great access to data. So definitely check at our website. Um, you can get in touch with, with us that way or feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Hey, and another tool too, is we talk about working remote, we have this program that we do and it's 125 bucks, okay? How do you work with your remote worker, right? And, and it's a survey that gets to the profile of what my profile is of how do you work with me remote, okay? And I, I'll tell you what my challenge is work with me remote is that I play too much when I get on. That's my problem. <laughs> yep. There you go. Well, yep. so really quickly, I just wanted to show everyone we bring, we pulled up the website. You can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can click here for your scorecard. You guys are seeing that, right? I'm pretty yes. right, because last yep. week I did a mm -hmm. wrong share. Yep. Uh, so you can see right there on the corner, they got some COVID-19 and stuff uh, right there for you. You can check it out. It's hrboost.com. Uh, and Katie, do you know what you want to tell me where your photos are so people can know exactly how they can go get the, the real deal facts? Uh, well, <laughs> you may be shamelessly plugging. I will do the same. Uh, <laughs> We've got our uh, our blogs with different articles, our knowledge center as well, uh, where you can go and, and uh, check out some information there as well. You'll see some pre-recorded uh, webinars and, and like we said, some of those booster blasts as well. So um, you're right, Katie, I forgot all about our harassment training, which was a big deal by the end of the year, December 31st. All employers need to, to uh, have that harassment done, even if you've only got one. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it's all about that. they're waiting for you very reasonably priced. Both mm -hmm. it can be self-facilitated and or can be feet on the ground. Yeah. With awesome.
Yeah. Yeah, this has been great stuff. I, I always love uh, chatting with you guys on and offline um, and uh, great re resources. number of times I've called, I know Debbie and asked questions for my own clients. So great resource altogether. They do pay it forward. Uh, things are available for these employers to try to get through this COVID time, as well as moving forward with uh, just employees in the workplace with the different dynamics that are going on right now. Yeah, no, you guys have been fantastic. We really appreciate this. I mean, I already got some. I already got some pings from people throughout uh, other other business owners who have said that they really dive into the stuff that yep. you're sharing today. So super excited about all this. Awesome. Really grateful for your time, Debbie, Katie. It's been fantastic. Thank you again, everyone yep. out there. Stay safe and stay healthy. Tomorrow we'll be back with Chicagoland Chats, and we uh, look forward to seeing you then. Have a all great right. day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.